If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, yeah. we announce the contest. It starts today. That's right. It's going to be uh, Sal versus Adam versus Justin versus Doug. It's really me versus the world. And uh, we're all competing to see who can get the best shape in six weeks. Adam and Justin have been fighting like crazy over who's going to get second place. We will see <laughs> at the end of the six weeks. This is going to be a lot of fun. So what we do in this episode is we talk about our strategies Diet strategies, training strategies. We talk a lot of shit uh, to each other. Yeah. We also talk about, um, you know, what it, do we like to win more than we like the, versus do we hate like, do we hate losing? Like, which one is more powerful, the, the the hate for loss or the love for the win? Which one's more important? So that was a good part of this episode. And then we talked about some of these uh, online conspiracies towards the end, the end of the episode. I also mentioned a free guide that we just created: uh, the top three things you do to burn body fat. That's available at mindpumpfree.com. Also, uh, I think we mentioned Organifi. I know we'll be using their protein throughout this entire process. If you go to organifi.com forward slash mindpump, you will get a discount on any of the Organifi products. And I do also want to mention that this month, MAPS Anabolic, the program that started it all, uh, the best muscle building, strength building, and metabolism boosting program is 50% off. So you can actually get full access to MAPS Anabolic for life for under $60. Uh, we also have a bunch of bundles where we combine MAPS programs together and discount them. And they're designed for specific goals, uh, like our Super Bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. All of our bundles and the MAPS Anabolic 50% off promotion is available at mindpumpmedia.com. Who's the last one to get on the mics? Who's the last one? Oh! Always oh, Justin. Oh. Always oh, Justin. I almost got in like right in time, but I ah, fuck you guys. I don't think he's. Is he always the last one? He is a little bit. Only huh? as of like um, recently, unless we're ordering dessert. Uh, <laughs> and, he's the, <laughs> and then he's the first one. Oh my god, <laughs> bro, it's backfire. Wow, bro. your strategy's backfiring. Let the shit yeah. talk. Me. No, it's not, dude. It I, I already know. I already bro, know. What it, I already know how many. I'm, I'm impenetrable. He's he's like focused as. Fuck! Mm-hmm. I know how to get him, dude. Damn it! I know how to get him, bro. He's doing good, I'm man. Bra- I, you know what? Like, and my phone wasn't working for when you guys were talking shit, you know, amongst <laughs> each other. And then I finally got it, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "You sons of bitches!" I was like, "Why is it mace bell swing?" Like, he's know what he's doing. I, was, I don't <laughs> know what I'm doing. I was waiting for That's him. hilarious. I was waiting for your response, and I'm like, yeah. "You didn't respond." I'm like. Did he hurt his feelings? I was like, yeah. <laughs> you see, oh, that see, that would be a solid strategy too. Then yeah. you start like self reflecting, like, oh you know, no, you know, it's funny, I'm hurting it? his feelings. How much you want to bet, Justin? In the back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in his mind right now. It's gonna fuck yeah. with him. Okay, that he thinks Let's you see. and I are working together. Co conspiring. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you guys. See, you I got do a little it. pact. I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sal's got one direction. He's trying to take me at him. They're like, this isn't working. Let's, no, let's no. try and steer him this way. <laughs> We're so afraid it's of you. because you guys are worried. No, yeah. you know what it's going to be like in this room? So uh, one of my favorite card games, I know you guys don't play this, so you might not get this analogy. Those that play cards will. Uh, Hearts is a, a mm-hmm. three or four man game, right? And it's all about fucking the other two people, right? Yeah. With with points, like you throw bad points on them, like so. Oh, okay. yeah. And I play with my two best friends. We've played since we were kids. All three of us are really good at it. And the entire game is always two guys ganging up on the other. Whoever's in the lead, yeah. Like it doesn't matter. It's like you, you there's no like alliance. Oh, it switches, yeah. It yeah. always switches. It's yeah. like oh, you know, we start out and yeah. then I, I have the best hand right out the gates and I start off winning. So the other, I know the very next time we deal the cards, those two are fucking gunning <laughs> for me, and it's just this back and forth of fucking each other for the entire game and so that reminds me of that like that's what it's going to yeah. be like is it's not necessarily us ganging up on justin uh, it's like yeah if, me and sal if, might tag if team all of a sudden sal knows. starts looks like i start looking at sal every day and i'm like oh this yeah. motherfucker's making gains and moves right now I already, I already got him yesterday i got adam yesterday yeah. you should ask him what happened yeah, I, <laughs> I do want to ask because you guys were working we were, out together and we i was were, like oh this is going to be so great we this were a all bad idea we were all lifting in the gym i was working out with uh, taylor and enzo which was a lot of fun by the way it, 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 I, I have to side with you adam 
it is very difficult to control your ego when you're working out with two kids. 100%. Very, I mean, looking I was up to you, dude. Bro, I was I, I pulled over, I don't know what I was pulling 5 15, 5 10, 5 15. Oh, you know. And I stopped right oh, there. I no, know. I don't know because you ordered weird. the kilo fucking gram plate, <laughs> Justin. Every I time, did. I fucked up. all of us. Sal's over there with his fingers. Bro. <laughs> uh, 10, 10, it was only when I had the steel insert. Like, I couldn't help it. Every Sorry. time I work out, I got to do the math. I'm like, how much should I just lift? <laughs> I know. But anyway, I stopped there. I, I, I felt like I was going to go heavier. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. But then I went and did barbell rows at like 275. I was yeah. like, <laughs> But as I'm doing this, I'm lo- I'm, I can see Adam. And Adam's fucking pushing it, man. Uh-oh. He's put because he's doing his own thing, right? Yeah. But he's going for it, sweating crazy. I'm like, damn, this guy's gonna. Yeah. I'm like, oh, if I keep pushing the intensity, he's ratcheting, it might get him to ratchet. Out. And then you know what ended up happening? <laughs> he gave himself a migraine. He gave night. himself a migraine, yeah. bro. bro I, now you're not getting sleep. You, I, you ain't getting gains. It works every time. Sleep, bro. I, th- I think what it was. I don't. Th- I think it's less. What was less of my training, and it was more of this goddamn studio yesterday. So fucking hot, man. It was so hot in here. And then that's why I had to get out of here, dude. I went to AC like. Gym. Oh. I went somewhere where it actually had like AC temperature gym? control. <laughs> that's a, it was the like AC Slater. It's like nineteen. It's like the nineteen fifties where that's like that's like a, an advertisement. Like we also have yeah. AC, we have AC yeah. and a TV. Not here at Mind Pump. You know what might have happened here? I hope this isn't what happened because you know Doug's gonna be. He's not gonna. He's not gonna let you live this down. The day you turned down the AC and Doug was like. It's going to freeze over, Adam. And Adam's like, no, it's not. I know AC. I've been up. <laughs> Adam's exact words. I've been operating AC for like 20 years. Like, what? <laughs> and that doesn't work. an AC master. Yeah. Uh, they, they, was this, dude, I was just telling him what the HVAC guy told me. So, hey. Uh, you know. yeah. So, <laughs> hey, uh, so I this know? is salty about it. So yeah. this has happened, okay, many a times uh. in my lifetime is, was the point of that, of where we have froze that managing gyms, okay, small boxes and big boxes. This is it's very common if you crank your AC all the way down when the temperature is really hot outside, they freeze over because yeah. they just can't keep up. They yeah, can't they just stay up. on the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So it's less you, likely to happen in a half hour to an hour time when it's 80 degrees outside trying to turn the AC think, down to 65. You so. think that's what happened to ours? It froze? Not that, not right now. I don't okay. think that's what happened. It just broke. <clears throat> I don't know what. I think we haven't had this thing consistent for more than a fucking week. Yeah, it's been no. all over the place. Well, yeah, it's we, either it's every either time we, frozen in here or it's it's the well, it's, it's lava freezing when it's cold outside. Like it just decides that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, you know, like when it's fucking blazing hot. Like it's it's just like nah, I'm not gonna work. Today. I think we have the like the heat and cold contrast model of AC. You know what I mean? The one that trains your body to uh, acclimate or something because it's never. You're right. Like right now. And I can handle the heat. I'm a, you know, I wasn't complaining yesterday, but I could feel it. And I'm like, these Not guys me. are melting. Oh, yeah, bro, I was like, it's just like melting away, bro, to nothing. The last podcast we did yesterday, which was at the end of the day, and it was hot as fuck, and we're going at about halfway through the end or towards the end. It was like 30 minutes left in the podcast, but like two questions left. I'm looking at Justin. I'm looking at Adam. I'm like, oh fuck, they're fading fast. Yeah, yeah both dude. you guys are done. I was doing this with my shirt. I was know, on three to get cups of air. coffee. I was doing anything I could Holy just to shit. get. I was like, <laughs> but I, I get irritable when I get hot, dude. Do you really? Oh, me I'm too. so. I'm, I mean, we know I'm, I'm already I'm an irritable guy as it is. And then when you put me in a sp- space like that, I just get pissed off. I don't mind, especially you- when we fucking pay all this money for this thing, dude. Come on. Yeah, we've, that's we've that built, is we've, true. We've built this fucking incredible studio. We've paid the goddamn AC guy multiple times to come out here and fix shit. We got one of those fucking control from your iPhone fucking Nest yeah. controlled yeah. ACs. Like, that's what irritates me. You think me. it's cock cool face? Cool tech is, is irrelevant if yeah. it's not fucking working. You think it's cock face that's th- fucking with us? I think it's just... We need a, to talk to him. I, th- uh. I think we need to... I, I think we need a little stern talking with the owners of the building is what oh, we okay. need. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think oh, Doug's guys. too nice. I think Doug, when communicates over, he's like, hey, you know, it'd be, it would be nice if you could help us work out this AC issue, maybe help us fix it. I think I need don't to encourage Doug to snap. I need yeah. him. You to want snap. us to? No, oh, you don't. You saw him driving. <laughs> you we ain't going to... nowhere. Have all the people that lease the building from these people, we're the most consistent, and we're not going anywhere. That's true. Like, they have problems. <laughs> I know. They're yeah. having problems collecting bills from everybody else. They're uh, like fucking cool with mind pump. <laughs> oh mind pump God. fucking pays. Yeah, yeah we'll pay that shit in advance. Yeah, that's how we got into God the place damn, in the first man. place. Come on. So, but last night, so you got a, You got a, You had a full on migraine from that, huh? That was probably one of, if not the worst headache I've had. And now the asshole mm. move that I did. I, you sure it's not brain cancer? <laughs> it's fucked up. I know that's how you get tell up. Uh, <laughs> what happens if I get diagnosed? Wow. I would feel terrible. You would. Bro. I'd feel so bad. You would. It'd be funny. <laughs> like Sal's strategies to make you think you're li- like actually like, dying. Like you're dying. Like, yeah. like, like you got a problem. I, you know doctor. what? I could actually do that with you guys because you guys trust me so much with your health. I would never do that. <laughs> I would never do that. I don't know, man. I, I would. Yeah, I did it I'd once. Take, I take your stuff with a grain of salt. I don't I, trust anything you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do. You have to. You have to convince me like three times. I did. I I did it once. 
once to who was it? My cousin, where he was. Oh, I was on Facetime with him and my brother and my cousin. We're all messing with each other, and they were all swimming. And I see him turn around to go do something, and there's this row of like uh, circles on his back. And so my brother's like, "What's on his back?" And my my cousin's like, "Huh?" And he turns around. And he's like, what's wrong with his back? And I knew what it was. I'm like, he must have had cupping done cupping, yeah. earlier. But the idiot didn't realize that you get a bunch of circular hickeys. A bunch of hickeys on your- but he didn't know that, right? So he's like, what? Oh, he, he didn't know that? No. So he's looking Hilarious. in the mirror and he's like freaking out. He's like, what is it, Sal? And I'm like, listen, I'm like- These are boils. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, take, <laughs> I'm like, dude, dude, I'm like, take your pulse. I'm like, do you know how to take, take the pulse? Take your he's pulse, like, no. man. Oh my God. Hold so he, on. Yeah, yeah. Stand there. So he takes his pulse. I'm like, if it's over 100, I need you to, like, I want you to lay down. I knew it was going to be over 100 because he's freaking out, right? So he's taking his pulse. He's like, it's over 100. I'm like, do you feel dizzy? He's like, a little bit. Bro, I, <laughs> I stretched this You're out. Such an I stretched it out for like 10 minutes with symptoms that I knew he had. You, you should know? have given him like cream and yeah. stuff to sm- yeah. slather on. Yeah, I'm like, has your, has your pee been really dark lately? And he's like, oh, I think so. I'm like, look, I mean, it, this I is do. a sign your liver may be. And poor kid was freaked out. And then after that, I felt bad. So I won't do it. I won't you do it ever dick. again. Hey, you see all the four members uh, hopping on the six week challenge with us. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. How many? Like, There's quite I a few. Oh, Everybody's good. posting pictures where they're at right now where their body fat percentage is and everyone's kind of doing it now what do you i'd like to hear what you get now i have my own like my own personal goals obviously uh i said to you guys that i'm gonna win and i plan to (laughs) but i also like there's certain things that i'm working on that glad you're giving yourself pep talk now are you do you consider are you guys fighting for second place is that what you guys are doing right now? <laughs> is that the competition i don't even know what that is no, <laughs> no, no, no. what's second place i but i also like i i'm still not back to where i want to be body f- or uh, muscle wise so that's still a high priority right now for me even though we're going to do this like body fat thing so yeah. and now obviously increasing muscle mass will also reduce body fat percentage too but to do both is always tough right you typically you focus on one or the other and the the easier thing for me to do would be just to do a purely cut and just try and shred as much fat as I possibly can and then mm-hmm. say hey at the end of 6 weeks I shredded x amount of fat. So personally I'm going to I'm going to come out right now and I'm going to run 2 weeks of a deficit and I'm going to lean then I'm going to run 2 weeks of a bulk and then I'm going to run 2 weeks of a cut. So mm-hmm. I'll just tell you guys mm-hmm. straight up my strategy mm-hmm. of what I'm doing and bulk the reason in the middle, huh? Well, because I still want to build lean mass sure. mm-hmm. because I I'm I'm getting back to building my physique again. Now if this was a you know, show and I was getting ready. And if I use the same formula that I right, was, and you just want to peel all the way right, down, would be and, different. And I'm already happy with my lean body mass, but I have a feeling when we test today, you know, my lean body, I, I like my lean body mass to be over 200 pounds when I start to cut. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing mm-hmm. I'm going to be somewhere in the 180s to 190s, and so I would like to build. We need still. to figure out the parameters. What I, what I was thinking about this last night is like, how are we going to? Because I know I'm at a disadvantage. I'm going into this consistently trained, already fit. You guys are going into it out of shape. So you guys have a lot of room. <laughs> you guys have a lot of room. You know what I mean? There's a lot of potential uh, there, right? So well, anyway. I think I think we. I mean, I'm really wheezy. I, this yeah, is like, oh, this God, is what I. This is kind of what I want everybody it. to do, and I think that you know, and because I'm thinking this is what I'm thinking: uh, muscle built, fat lost, and then most of, uh, the best visible change, which I think we can all vote on. Uh-huh. And then what we'll do is we'll think of points for first, second, and third. So first place in muscle built, maybe get five points. First place in fat lost, maybe get five points, and then first place in who made the best visible change, and we'll take pictures. The overall aesthetic. And then whoever has the most points at the end of it mm. gets first place, and then everybody else second and third. Like compare contrast kind of points in that last category. Yeah, so like if, like, like let's say we do our body fat test, and we go and like, oh, okay, so you know Sal lost seven pounds of body fat, but Justin lost eight pounds of body fat, and, uh, and Adam lost six pounds. Well, then he's going to get, you know, Justin will get first place points, I'll get second place points. And Adam will get third place, and we'll do that with muscle gain. Pretty much how it's going to be laid out. Yeah, yeah, and we'll do we'll do that with muscle gain, and we'll do that with uh, with pictures. And then what we'll do with the pictures is everybody will look. You can't vote for yourself. We'll make that rule, and then we'll say, okay, everybody vote on who made the best visible change. Yeah, and we'll take a before and after. I so like today, like you know, I, like I feel that. like that's fair, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you could do that. I was adding a couple more variables. I, I thought it would be like kind of kettlebell press. I thought it would be kind of cool <laughs> yeah, to to take the test today and then to actually tell everybody what we're looking at so i could say you know i have x amount of pounds of lean body mass i have x pound x x amount of pounds of fat and then my body fat percentage is this and then i would share with you guys i have six weeks this is what i'm going to try and achieve mm-hmm. bottom line like mm-hmm. straight up and everybody can be different 
Like maybe Justin goes like, I just purely want to reduce body fat. I already have enough lean body mass. Mm-hmm. I just want to get leaner. And I know a realistic number for me is this. Yeah. And same thing goes for you. And that's, you know, your body that's where you're current. And I, and I think what's more, what's cooler about this is to show people how much we can control that, yeah, right? Yeah. Like that. That's, oh no, I think that's smart. We should. Right. Do that. And, but and we do that, need yeah, to, to be about- honest. I was like going to say I was going to try and maintain for the most part, maybe gain just a bit of, of lean body mass. But for the most part, yeah, my goal is to to kind of peel down. You've already and- lost like four or five pounds. You look like. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I didn't want to come in and you know and just be obvious. I was sandbagging. You know, at the same mm-hmm. time, like coming into you the competition. Sandbagger. I ain't no sandbagger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does that sound like a racist term? It does. It so do you know where that, that, that? You know where that comes from? I know where that comes from. <sighs> you do? Yeah. Well, the term sandbagger. Yeah. Well, we used to say that at twenty four when people. No, were, no. Where did it originate well, though? Originate. From? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. golf. Oh yeah. Okay. It's a golf term. So like, what, sandbaggers are somebody who like so. Uh, if you if you go golf in like local tournaments right now, you have everybody has a handicap, right? If you're mm-hmm, not a pro, mm-hmm. and what a lot of guys do and they sandbag is they 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 get their handicap really high, right? And then they go do these little local tournaments and they and they win money win money. And the way you do that is like so every like golf course you go and you play, you can you enter in your score and they see like oh well you know Justin you know over the last fifteen times he's hit at all these different courses he's you know ten over par consistently. Right. So his, his handicap his average is his, his norm his, right. Yeah. So his handicap is ten. So he gets that those ten swings. Now people do this where they they shoot kind of terrible. You know, oh, and then they go into a tournament. Then they go into a tournament, and then they... It's and a hustle, they, huh? Yeah. Well, so it's just like pool You're a sandbagger. Sharks. Yeah, right. pool, like, I mean, very similar, but yeah. Mm-hmm. like it, I, Yeah, I didn't want to be that like that obvious about it, because I could do that. Obviously, mm-hmm. I'm in a position where I could do that, but like I'd, I, I, I just want to get healthy. My agenda is to like pay attention to like my sleep and, and the way I'm waking up mm-hmm. in the morning and the way that like overall... Uh, you know, my digestive system is, is, is working. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like, I I am doing this, this carnivore diet. So it's interesting. It's, it's definitely something that I'm like taking notes as far as like what I experience, you know, every day, like what, what it is that are some of my challenges and, you know, some of these things like with like palate fatigue is already something I'm noticing, you know. Oh, you're getting grossed out now by me? Well, it's just not, not that I'm grossed out. It's just that it's, as far as like if I was to think long term, like I'm thinking six months from now and I was like still doing that, I'd be like, oh, yeah. you know, like it's just like a like Ugh, that's same that's thing. A lot of meat. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. You know, I, I did like I didn't think I was very much of a variety person, but like just having vegetables totally breaks up the meat. Mm. I'm going to tell <laughs> yeah, you that right now. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so it's interesting. It's but good. Have man. You lost, I'm excited about it. Have you lost like four or five pounds? I have. Yeah, See? I, I knew I, I was right on, right then, on point. Like, for me, I just feel like I've just I'm less like swole. I'm less like bloated. Mm. You know, so. how's your workouts? Um, not like I'm I'm not like fucking like crazy energy or like I like I feel like I'm I'm dominating my workouts right now. I feel like I'm just kind of maintaining. So I feel like I've dipped a little bit uh, in performance actually in, in my workouts. But I'm gonna keep paying attention to that. See if like I need to go through this a bit longer. So you're trying to go in and not. You're just trying to maintain. Is that is that what you're saying? Well, no. But, I mean, I'm because you're gonna keep that, losing. Yeah, that's no, just, that's no. a good way to set it up, set the table for no results. After no, six no, weeks. no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, I pretty much I, want to stay the same. So no, 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 no. <laughs> I win. No, I'm gonna make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that just to me says I need probably need some more calories. Is all. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with that and see if I can kind of up happening. my energy. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I, I don't know. I, I was thinking about it's like what's my goal? I guess my goal is be. I'm gonna try and get shredded. I think that's the best thing I can do. I, I'm trying to add lean body mass, which is what I've always tried to do consistently. I don't know how much lean body mass I'll be able no, to No, I think that's I think that's a great this funny thing you keep saying that you're at this disadvantage, which I think is such bullshit. You you have I think you have the greatest advantage out of everybody right now because of your consistency and that you're just coming off a nice bulk right now. Coming out I mean that's just yeah, like this is you're where you're at right now is where I like my body to be right before I get ready for a show. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna try and get shredded. We'll see what happens. Yeah. See what happens in six weeks. But it, here's the thing for me, I have I, you know, we all have these limiting factors. For me, it's my gut health. If I can maintain my gut health really well, it's not going to be a problem. I'll get shredded. If my gut goes off, 
that's going to take priority. I'm going to have to get make sure I get healthy before I try and get Oh, shredded. I hope that goes so I can yeah. just fuck with you so yeah. bad about your tummy. It should be all right. Yeah, it should be all right. Fucking tummy. <laughs> oh, you lost because you're yeah. a tummy, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, fuck, so, it sucks. It should be all right. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is right now I'm eating some starches, not a whole lot, but I'm eating some starches, and I'm going to keep doing that. And I'm probably going to, about two or three weeks into it, then I'm going to start to go into hard cut. And the way I'll do it is I'll utilize, of course, I'm going to drop calories, and I'm going to utilize more intermittent fasting approach. Um, and then maybe throw in a little extra cardio. I'm not necessarily cardio scheduled, but watch my steps. Now, what's cool is, is, is everybody in here kind of typically training and eating and do well. I know Justin's doing the carnivore diet, so that's actually really unique. But are you guys doing anything different? Are you implementing anything different? Like for, for me, I'm going to use a lot of my tools that I have always used. I plan to use my Fitbit. That's why I've been consistently wearing it. Mm-hmm. I'll be tracking my food and fat secret. Like, I'm going to do all those things. Now, are you guys using any tools? Are you planning on doing anything different than what you would do in the past? I'm using my Apple Watch, okay. uh, yeah, for steps count and all that. Like the the actual sleep um, metrics on there, I'm not really going to pay attention to. But like, yeah, I'm definitely doing that. Um, as far as like cardio and like like, so it's all going to be neat. And then you know, towards the end, I'm going to. I'm going to focus a little bit more on like the athletic type of cardio. Mm. So like stuff I was kind of doing uh, previously with like uphill sprints and all that. Yeah. I found this, uh, these, I looked up these, these old Russian or Soviet era studies on this plant. Uh, I'm not going to share. Yeah. yeah I already I'm not know you're, tell you guys you're what it is, full of shit, but I'm going to take it because it's the study show that it, no, I'm not going to do anything like dude, that. That'll it, be your, uh, yeah. go-to. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, no, for me, I'm going to slowly ramp up my training to where towards the end of it, I should be utilizing techniques like occlusion training. Mm. Trigger sessions are money. For, yeah. I'm, nothing I've ever done ever by itself. Of course, you have to have good exercise programs. So it doesn't replace anything. But when I do my you know three trigger sessions on my off days consistently, that is crazy. Everything for fat loss, muscle building. And so I'm saving that towards the end. And I'll do a little occlusion to see what I can do in terms of squeezing out more muscle. Now, what about programming for both you guys? What are you guys doing as far as your routine? So, yeah, so more maps aesthetic during my, like, uh, foundational days, and then I'm actually <clears throat> doing, why you see me doing, like, pushing the sled and, like, uh, like uh, um, the mace bell and all. I'm using that more for trigger sessions, and so I'm doing that consistently. Uh, uh, with un- the unconventional stuff, I'm replacing with the rubber bands, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I, I'm doing split. So I'm still on split right now. Oh, you split. will it carry you through? You- uh, I think it will. Uh, if my body, if I feel like I need to change it up, I will. Uh, and I may, towards the end, go back to full body with uh, trigger sessions, which is what I said earlier. Um, but I'm going to see. I'm just going to see how my body feels. I, my volume is going to slowly start to ramp up, and I may start training <clears throat> twice a day is what I may end up doing. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. Wow. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's cool that you're doing that Ooh. because we are both doing the same thing. So it's kind of, I, I like that. I like Double that. Double split. I like having us having similar in just a little few different variables. What about supplements? Mm-hmm. Supplements wise, it's the staples, you know, creatine. I'll use the Organifi protein uh, if I'm, my protein intake is low. Um, but other than that, it's just creatine is really, and then the, the you know, other stuff like fish oil and certain minerals and vitamins if I feel like I need them. But nothing crazy. There's really no supplement that's out there that's going to really do anything for me. I don't take fat burners because I've, I've done that in the past, and I know exactly how that affects my body. I end up losing muscle and feeling shitty anyway. Um, so there's really nothing nothing else. What about you guys? I'll uh, be using – I'll be what, when I get like uh, dialed in food-wise, this is where I really like to start to add in supplements that I, can, I feel like make a difference because my diet is consistent. And so, you know, you'll all consistently every morning be probably taking my vitamin D, turmeric, and then uh, and my omegas. And then uh, before or after my workouts, I'll be doing creatine. So those will be, and then I always utilize either whey or the Organifi protein. So I bounce back and forth between mm-hmm. the between the two of them because I just it's rare that I get enough protein every single day. So for me. It'll be, and I know that it wouldn't be bad if I had a one low day of protein, but I could easily string two or three days. Mm. So for me, uh, you know, I'll probably consistently, you know, every other day, I end up probably using a shake because, you know, I'll, I'll string a day or Do two. Do you have any so. go? What are your go to foods during this period? Do you have go to foods? Sure. Yeah. I know. I definitely do. Although I'm big on food rotation. So uh, I never eat the same thing over and over consistently. But I, I love to meal prep and I love chicken thighs, white rice, and then some sort of a green. And I rotate my greens typically through asparagus, spinach, and broccoli. 
broccolinis. Those are kind of like my mm-hmm. my go to veggies. Do you have like a um, like a rotation of your macros all planned out as far as like you know the percentages? Kind of a no, yes and no. Like so, I have an idea. So. I haven't been tracking really consistently uh, up until about a week ago. I so so I'm kind of like paying attention right now, and I'm falling right around. And this is why too. I was telling you guys I don't want to completely go for a cut. And I think this is a. a and I'm glad we're talking about this because I think this is a mistake a lot of people make. So <clears throat> I know my body so well. I know where I like to be lean body mass. I know where I like to la- have my calories. I know where I like to be with all of that stuff before I do like an aggressive cut. And I'm just not there. I'm up to about 3,000 calories a day. That's not very high for me. You know, I I, I would eat 4,500 to 5,000 calories. Now, mind you, I was 20 pounds heavier. I'm on anabolics, things like that. But still, you know, I should be north of 3,500 to 4,000 calories in a place where I really want it to cut. So being that I'm only at 3,000 calories right now, that's why I'm only going to do this like, and I said two weeks but I'll watch my body, <clears throat> and if I feel like I'm dropping too fast or I feel like I'm, my metabolism right. is slowing down, I'll kick myself out of the, the deficit and go back to mm-hmm. a surplus for a while and try and gain. So even though I have like this set plan of like macros and caloric intake where I, I plan to stay, that very well could adjust and change, which I anticipate it to because I know that I'm not... You know, I would never... Like, let's say this was... There was a show in six weeks, and I'm like, you know what? Let's get ready. You know, I'm 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 lean enough to where I could get pretty lean for the show. I wouldn't do it because I know I'm not in a good position to to get ready for the show. Could I do it? Absolutely, but I wouldn't do it because I don't think I'm in an ideal situation. So, I uh, that's what I mean by like this is going to be different as we get ready for this. Like, no matter what, I'm planning to be changing my body composition week over week. I will be improving. But uh, what I'm doing with my calories and cardio and stuff like that will be adjusted week by week based off of what I yeah. what I kind of see. Yeah, I'm doing uh, – my go-tos will be for the starches, white rice, buckwheat, uh, sweet potato, and then, of course, all the, the, the meats. You know, red meat is always my, my go-to when it comes to – for proteins and fats. Um, and then vegetables. You know, I like the cruciferous, but I also like to rotate those with things like uh, bok choy. Um, and uh, spinach and stuff like that, and I'll cook it really well, and I feel like I can I can consume a large amount of those and feel good. But I do like to cycle low carb with higher carb once I start to get closer, because I do notice that if I go lo- I go I'll go low carb and I'll squeeze off a little body fat, and then I'll but I'll notice I'm flat and I'll pump up the carbs. And if I get my body fat tested right around that point, I'm usually leanest because everything's full and I have lower lower body fat. Absolutely, yeah. So and that's when I'll feel that's when I can I feel like I look. Uh, like I've made the biggest biggest changes. So I'll be doing that the entire way through. I will be cycling carbs up and down. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and I know Justin asked the, the, the number. I don't know. <laughs> Justin's going to be cycling his meat. He's going to go so New York strip, yeah. sirloin. sirloin. You know? <laughs> I am really, really, I'm really excited to, to, to really uh, hear your feedback on this whole journey because it's it's very interesting to me to to try and change. I mean, that was one of the things that uh, even that I didn't like about the keto diet that we yeah. did is just it gives me less variables to play with i like i like to be able to manipulate all the different macronutrients mm-hmm. i like to mm-hmm. rotate change more and like the more restrictive your diet is the harder it is to do that stuff yeah the simplicity of it i guess was appealing to me on that aspect just because uh my lifestyle and and just everything else that i'm managing and trying to control um in my own environment but at the same time yes like i get <laughs> I could see myself getting a little bit bored with with the rotation of like meats that are I mean it's pretty fucking limited but um so far I mean I'm I'm enjoying it so I'm trying to kind of stick with uh you know positive mentality throughout this entire process and I'm I'm going to fucking do it all the way to the end to give it a fair go I know we've talked about like I'm not you know if people go through these restrictive diets to not just force your way through it like even if it doesn't agree with you and so so far it's agreeing with me and my body it's just right. a matter of like my own Your digestion is is it better or worse or the same? Better. Wow. Better. You're yeah. doing the fully formed stool, you're not constipated no yes, none of that shit. Yes. Then that's what I, I was a little bit worried about like backing up, you know, and like yeah. not having like regular um, bowel, movements. bowel movements. I was gonna say dumps, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you not to get all scientific. Yeah, yeah, getting all all churchy over there. Uh, but yeah, like 
so far so good. I mean, I, it's pretty much consistent, like the the way I was doing it before. So it should reduce the amount of uh, like the amount of times that you go to the bathroom, which is normal because you have less bulk right to your stool. But other than that, you know, from I mean, what I've read. Unless people have issues, like still, I still painting those toilets. Oh, yeah. No, you're not. No, I'm not. It's not as bad. It's not I went. As bad. I went in there the other day. After oh, I haven't Justin. seen one painted in no, weeks. I know. Wow. I was like, it doesn't. It's not that bad. It's solid. Yeah. Now, is there? Are you pooping less? You probably do. I'm yeah, sure it's I do. less volume. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like maybe twice a day. I would say instead versus, of five times. Yeah, like six. <laughs> yeah. That was totally normal. Yeah, you know what yeah. sucks about this? We joke about it so much that people must think you just have the worst. I know that's what's hilarious. <laughs> it's like it, it's exactly. like two it's times. the same thing. People think I'm fat and like yeah. all you. It's all these things we joke about, and then people like really think like it's real. It's we do it. You know what it is? It's like one thing happens once, and then we zero in on it, and then yeah. that's you. That's who you are. I had BO like once. I just yeah. own it, dude. Twice. Once, Twice. Or, you know, fine, whatever. Bro, you, <laughs> bro, like you took a, a deodorant and you put it on and then put it back on the shelf I, in I the did. convenience store. That I was the, yeah. the most you gangster just, move yeah. I've ever you seen. You deserve everything you That's get. probably, you know, I feel so guilty <laughs> about that. poor bastard it's, bought it's, that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I not, I didn't steal it, right? But I kind of did a little bit. But bro, it. you had like the worst pits oh, that day. You I walked, had to do that. I walked over the store. It was necessary. Just, we were doing, holding a seminar in front of people. Like People would have left. Right. You yeah, know what I mean? How bad I think Safeway understands. I put it on and put it right back. I saw a guy at the store the other day buy some... Bought some alcohol, started drinking, and just put it down in the aisle. Kept walking around. I'm like this fucker just wow. got some free drinks. Well, wow, that's yeah. I that's couldn't bold. judge him though because I did the same thing. Are sure. you are you going to be doing any uh, macro counting yourself? Like, are you actually going to track, or are you just kind of go? You know, I, I I've never I've never done it that way for myself. Be, uh, so I don't think I'm going to. I, I might do it just to see what it ends up at, but I just go off of how I feel and, and what I see in the mirror and my performance in the gym and. Just, I, I mean, I got myself down to what four or five percent body fat doing that before, and and consistently am able to get myself in the in the single digits doing that, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I, I think my goal over six weeks will be to lose anywhere between four to six percent body fat. I think is a good goal. I, I don't want to push it too hard. It's an aggressive goal. It is. I mean, six weeks, four percent's not bad, right? Six yeah. percent's kind of aggressive. Yeah, six is aggressive. I mean, a half a percent to a percent a week is a very realistic but very consistent. but also you have to be consistent oh yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. you know when i'm when i'm getting what i that's how i would gauge like my weeks out for a show like i okay i'm at you know 12 percent body fat and i got a show in eight weeks okay i know where i i can get i can get to four percent you know pretty i feel confident i can get there and but that's that's but with, that's that's like fucking dialed yeah that, that's through. giving me maybe one or two weekends where i enjoy myself a little bit is the way i is the way i figure it like i, I might be able to have one or two weekends where I enjoy myself a little bit, not going out, not going crazy. But other than that, there's got to be four weekends in there where it's consistent, like it is Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. in order to drop that kind of body fat. That's at least what I've. Identified That's where I'm going to get you guys, dude. I'm a machine. The so weekends? Yeah, I'm a machine, dude. Once no, I, you, once... what are you talking about, bro? Weekends, you like to sit around, watch sports, and eat shitty food. Yeah, it's your favorite thing to do. I do, unless I'm in competition mode, dude. Yeah. Uh -huh. Once, much competition mode, bro. You know what's crazy? You, I got a lot of housework to. Do you listen, bro? So, yeah. I am still, I'm still listening to Drake when I work out. You're so fucked when I switch to fucking rock, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm, I'm still in hip hop right yeah. now, dude. Yeah. Yes, you haven't made you it way back to rage yeah, machine. you haven't even. Oh my uh, God! When once rage uh, hits, you uh, may as well wave the white I'm flag. I'm saving rage for the last two weeks. You may as well wave it the was, white flag. It was, you know, I was really happy working out with those kids yesterday, though, because they, you know, they they look up to us, and you know, they had such a disappointing workout with Adam the day before. <laughs> so at least yesterday they had. <laughs> they, had they, got, good, they got to see true excellence like, oh, in motion, huh? They are fucking awesome. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> they're not all talking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Sal, are you gonna hurt yourself? I'm like, no, no, no I'm not Adam. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh wow. All right, that's oh, enough. You know, oh, I, no, I do. Good, I good. actually love the fact that uh, you've now done. Like, I look forward to when Justin's done it too. Um, one, I, I think it's been great for the company to yeah. for all, all of them to. You know, you see yeah. the energy within the staff and everything. Like now everybody's lifting and training and stuff. Yeah. I love to see that. And then I think it's really good. I mean, these guys haven't. They haven't really had a chance to to live with all of us. They haven't had a was, chance to feel what it's like to to be trained by. Yeah, by. it's and I, I was. I mean, I was watching you as you were training them, and I thought this is really cool because you you did like. I mean, I coached and worked out which by the way i fucking hate to yeah, do it's the worst. i just want to put it out yeah, there that's why i left but i know i know that it's it's good and right and i can tough it out for six weeks to help some kids out and and and, yeah. and create the environment stuff like that 
Uh, so it was, and it helps me that you guys are doing that too because then it, then I don't feel obligated yeah. to be the guy who's always. I don't fucking, mind doing it because I don't like doing. I don't it. mind doing it. Yeah. It's just I don't coach as well as if I was just coaching. Right, right. Because yeah. so I'm kind of doing both. That's what right? I mean by that. Yeah. And when we're and when we're in a focus mode on ourselves, like I mean, I, I was you know Enzo will listen to this. I was going to jab him yesterday. You know, between every set, like he wants to play and sit around and talk and goof, and like that's just not me. Yeah. Like when I'm in tra- talk to me. yeah, when yeah. I'm in train mode, like I'm like focusing on my breathing in between. I'm like trying to get my heart rate back down, focusing on my next yeah. set. I'm Wrapping already back up, going telling in. myself, okay, what I want to do right here on this yeah. next one. Do I want to increase it my was, weight? Do I want to stay the same? Like I'm thinking all these. It things. was fun. It was fun because training with them because they were that you could tell they were motivated and excited. And the funny thing too is. Regardless of what I do, to them it's like, whoa, because they don't, well, Enzo's been working out for a little while, but, you know, he's 17 years old. Taylor never lifts weights, so anything I pick up to him looks like a massive, like, oh my God, you're going to use the 40s? I'm like, yeah, I'm warming up. <laughs> <laughs> they get all pumped and excited about it, and then oh, I can wow. point things out, and then when they're working out, that I, I enjoy that. I, I, I'm happy that I can bring that kind of value to them. You know, it was fun. We yeah. had the music going on. Everybody was working and out. So, nice and so when we were working out, hey, should we should take our shirt off. Let's do this. I was like, look over at him, I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've been watching too much Instagram, oh, bro. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> four, give me exactly four weeks. Right, yeah. Well, that's what I told Four him. weeks, I'm going to have my shirtless I said, bro, I'm not, I said, that's not going to motivate me. I said, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling myself right now. Maybe when I'm feeling myself, I'm walking around naked. And I'll, like, I'll, right, be doing the shir- so I'll be doing the shirtless workouts in about that's, four weeks. Just to mess with everybody. The wife beater comes first. Oh, yeah. No, when I start working on a wife beater, That's what it is, dude. This is your the same thing you, you do with shirts down. I do with the music you know yeah. right start off and listen to Drake oh, you then, layer I, it? then I move myself <laughs> into a little bit harder like hip hop music and then in comes yeah. like the softer yeah. rock and then by the end I'm just fucking hard just rock. I'll work my way yeah. down to tank tops that's yeah. about as far as I go you gonna go tank top oh yeah Oh really? I haven't seen you work on really? a TikTok. Oh, yeah, I used to do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. you're. Uh, uh, I'm. I'm trying. Yeah, where are you going from? Because you're carnivore and you're working out hard. I'm trying to think. Where are you going to go from there? <sighs> Fuck, dude. That's you, why he's fucked. He's just going to go to flank about? steak. Yeah. <laughs> just give up now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's just going to go flank. Chicken, chicken. It is. It chicken is. Thighs. It is going to be interesting once I hit like yeah week four, week five. You know, on this this diet to see, but. I'm going to give it a fair go. Like I said, manipulating calories is really my only go-to. Do you, I'll make do a you have any idea how how many calories you're up right now? Have you started like... like? Yes, yeah, so I've, I've gone down significantly, obviously, because of the transition of not having carbs and having, you know, fat and like really being able to bump that. So I've been... I know that like I, I I've been somewhere around like two thousand you know maybe a little bit less like eighteen hundred calories like too too low like so I want to get up to like twenty five hundred and then, hard and with then just get me. to like three thousand I know it is hard it's hard so I'm, I'm I'm trying to spread it out a little bit more throughout the day um, and and get it in so like, can I give you some advice yeah throw in some I just bought some in fact I'm going to be using here you go here's a small little tip or trick that I'll be doing and by the way I'll share everything no secrets. Something that I'm going to do is I'm going to dramatic. I'm going to slowly ramp up my cholesterol intake, and by the end of it, I'm going to be eating oh, a significant a amount, significant yeah. amount of cholesterol because there's a short, there's like a week or two of doing that where you get some serious benefit. I'll recommend to you because you're just eating meats. Throw in some organ meats. Get some chicken livers oh, from yeah. the butcher mm-hmm. and fry those up in a pan with some butter and some bacon. Eat that shit and watch what happens. Especially post workout. I swear to God, it's like magic. This shit works. Yeah, I, de- I, really I, use that. I definitely want you guys to be completely transparent. I mean, that's why I shared even like how I played and plan to lay this out is as competitive as we all are. The idea is that people that are the audience that's listening can. No, hear. this is actually this is for the audience. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're very we are competitive. It's actually exciting for me. I love competing with. Yeah, dude. I love competing, but I also love compete even more than competing. I love competing with people. <laughs> who also love to compete and who have healthy egos. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I could fuck with you guys and talk shit, and I'm not going to hurt your feelings, right. and you're going to do it back to me, and I'm not going to fucking cry in the corner, and it just makes it so fun. Yeah. When I compete against people who are easy to fuck with, at first what I do is I fuck with them even more, and then I get bored. I'm like, yeah, this is stupid. Like, oh, this doesn't feel good. Yeah, you're too easy to, you're too easy to <laughs> you fuck with. You just feel like a bully. I used yeah, to do good. that, dude. I had a, my old business partner, when I first opened my studio, we would get in these competitions. It's you could fucking deadlift the most and then i'd start passing them up and of course what i'm doing as soon as, as, soon as i pass you up by a pound yeah i'm gonna talk shit to you all day right Every, on little things right? right and i'm gonna i'm gonna dig at you and be like oh man you should have got better sleep or that's weird you <laughs> outweigh me but i can lift more than i just push at him 
And then his feelings would get hurt. And so I keep doing it. And then he'd drop out of the competition and I'd win. Oh, well, that's no But fun. it was just, yeah, I'm like, oh, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but it's you guys. I know I'm going to fuck with you guys. I'm just <laughs> yeah. going to get right back. It's, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing. <laughs> it's going to be so awesome. So yeah, do you bring guys, it. someone asked me this in my uh, DM the other day. They said, do you... Uh, do you love to win or hate to lose more? What are you guys? What are you guys? Ooh. Uh, that's a good one. Well, you I know? love winning, but yeah, no, I have, I'm just Which a competitor one at heart, dude. Well, I we want... all are. So yeah. we're all competitive people, no, no doubt. But when you think about it, like, do you think that you love to win more or that you hate to lose more? Mm. I probably love to win more than I than I than than hate to lose. You know, here's the thing with hating to lose. That that's you have a, to be that's careful. That's my younger mind, I think. Well, here, well what's hating your, to lose. Hating to lose is your. You think now you love to win more. Yeah. I yeah. think so. I'm. That's what I said to the kid. I'm like, oh, love to win. It's, yeah. it's no hesitation. For oh me. fuck! I'm so I'm, gra- not, I'm so glad you guys said that. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not like I. I don't mind losing. Yeah. Losing. Losing actually. I'm, like <laughs> exactly. Losing only it's motivated like me more. Like like let's say this competition. Like that is like if you guys could actually beat me on this, I'm gonna be like whoa. Like mm-hmm. I need to look into like something that Sal or Justin is doing. Like that's fucking really cool. It'll be about time, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, 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 I don't. I it wouldn't beat Finally. me up that bad. Like of course a little yeah. bit of me would be like, motherfucker, yeah. I should have won. Like why didn't I win? Like it, yeah, it'll get me. But I, I, I think I there's a side to it. I can look at it right away. That oh, there's opportunity for me to be yeah. better and to learn to grow to get. You know what I'm saying? Where. And I love winning, winning so yeah. much. Fun. I don't oh, mind. Great I don't mind losing if I fucking went at it and went hard, and then the other person did too, and everybody was honest, and I lost. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Here's the deal. Here's a problem with hating to lose because I've heard that before. And you're right. When a I lot was, of people, a lot of people are that way. You're right. And when I was Taylor's younger, like that. Taylor and I talked about this one day. And when I was younger, I I, I thought like that as well. Yep. And then I, and then here's a problem with that. You ever watch? You ever watch a boxing match? And you're watching them fight each other, and then somebody is kind of clearly in the lead, and then they start fighting to not lose yeah. instead of fighting to win. Or you oh. watch a sport where they're ahead like by prevent a prevent defense. Yeah, and it's just worst thing ever. And I get the strategy in the game, but it's also it almost it's almost um, what's the word? It's uh, well, this is it very- gets rid of the whole the whole spirit of competition. You're not in there to not lose. What the yeah. fuck's that all well, about? Changing your mentality completely. You're there to win. Think about this: when you win. A paradigm shattering moment can't happen. When you lose, a paradigm shattering moment can happen. Of course. Because if you if you're like use your analogy with boxing, if you you're a boxer and you've been yeah, training, training or learning. Training yeah, right? You're training for sixteen weeks to get ready for it and you're doing everything you're supposed to do. The people that become so devastated when they when they lose, that's part of it because their ego because they believed that everything they did was what they were supposed mm-hmm. to do. Whereas if you looked at it differently where it was like, Wow, I lost there was an opportunity for me to do something better. Where is that at? I'm looking for that now. So, yeah. so I, I actually experienced this uh, this in when I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So when I competed in, or when I trained in Brazilian, I only competed, I want to say three times, if I'm not mistaken. But when I trained, I trained maybe you know I started out and I would do like two days a week or three days a week, and weight training was still my priority. I, I never stopped lifting weights. I loved it, but I would do Jiu Jitsu. Like I said, two three days a week. Then I entered into a tournament, and I went in there with this mentality that, okay, I, I know my skills, but I'm also probably going to be the strongest dude in my weight class. Well, I went in there, and I lost. I lost my, my first match, and it motivated me like nothing else. After that tournament, I started training four and five days a week jiu-jitsu, and I scaled back my weight training to the appropriate level if you want to win in a sport, which is probably two or three days a week rather than the everyday thing. So now it was supporting my jiu-jitsu Versus the other way around. I was super motivated, and I went into a tournament. It was uh, the United Gracie Invitation, I think, in San Francisco. This was in 2006, I think. And I won. And not only did I win, nobody scored a single point on me. I blew the, I blew the, the, the doors off of everybody, oh, right? Wow. Lost my motivation after that. After that tournament, I went back to training, and it was not the same, and it's because I didn't learn anything. Yeah. Like, the loss is what taught me. There was no real adversity. What to do. Now, now, I, now, and the problem, again, now, what I should have, I should have had a healthier attitude because win or lose, I should have been motivated. But my point with that is it, I'm not afraid of losing. Mm-hmm. As long as I, look, if I lose because I was lazy, then I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I enter into competition and I lose and I know in my heart, like, well, it's because I didn't fucking try or it's because I didn't do my best. Right. Then I'm going to be pissed off. But if I fucking went for it, I'll be disappointed. Don't get me wrong; I'll be very disappointed if I lose. But at the end of it, I'll be like, okay, well, that's how I, I did everything it. and I lost. What can I do differently next time? That's how I see it when you're going into shifting into like the prevent 
type of mentality, right? Like you're just get you get into this sort of fear based. Like it, it's he doesn't like, understand that analogy. What prevent defense? Like he understands that. <laughs> I know analogy. What prevent de- defense. <laughs> yeah, you're ahead in points, and you right. just all you're trying to do is just stop them from scoring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it it doesn't that's feel a, as good a, to win <laughs> with that mentality because uh, I mean what you're doing now is you're shifting from what your like original mindset was I'm going to win and then just winning you're you're applying this strategy that's a little bit more uh you know you're using offense you're using more aggression and you're really pressing the other team versus now we're sort of you know pulling back and managing mm-hmm. and that for me that like I've always just tried to maintain as much as possible that 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 win and so if I lose it, I just know that at least I kept uh, you, you know that same sort of motivation and that energy going in that direction because that's like I want to keep that sort of mentality because it mm-hmm. feels I know the feeling on the other side of that mentality versus you know being paranoid I'm going to lose. So years ago they did this big uh, study or this poll and they've repeated it a couple times where they ask groups of people and they say would you rather have the whole world dramatically increase their prosperity but America be the second most prosperous country, or would you rather have the whole world dramatically reduce in prosperity? So now there's a lot more poverty and things are a lot worse, but America's number one. And most people said they'd rather have the second one where America's number one, but everything's shittier. And that is a fucked up, that's a, that's a fucked up mentality. Yeah. That's a very jealous, this is why you get so many, you'll you'll get people who- Scarcity mindset. Well, Mm -hmm. they'll just be like, look, you know, uh, forget the fact that everybody's doing better. I'm just mad that the people over here are doing- better in comparison to how they did better than I am, even though I've also done better. Mm -hmm. And that makes me mad because they're doing so much better and I'm only doing this much better. That's a stupid- It's a scarcity mindset. You see it in business all the time. Right, right. I mean, uh, a little business tip on, I think, something that we we did in our space that you just don't see a lot of is people that have like a a business like ours, right? I mean, we just had Jordan Shallow in here. Jordan Shallow- uh, come, it gets access to our our private forum, and it's a way that we can give give to our forum, right? So our forum gets access to this brilliant mind who comes on there and answers questions for an hour, right? How cool is that? Now most people won't do this, and they wouldn't do this as a business because they're afraid that well, guess what? Jordan sh- sells online programs and offers coaching and has his own podcast. He's going to take our people. He would take our people. Very, and he's a very smart guy, smarter than I am, for sure, especially when it comes to biomechanics and fitness, right? I mean, that's a brilliant mind. So most people in our space would never – it's like allowing the wolf in the inside the, mm-hmm. the, the, uh, the inside the chicken den or whatever, right? So that's what – most people look at look at their their business that way, and it's a scarcity mindset. I've never operated that. I've way. I've never. None that. of us have, yeah. which is why we all encourage those things. And it's it's actually what's helped us grow is that we have that mindset that listen, if this guy can come in and he can provide more value to others' lives more than what I could, I I don't care if they go out somewhere else because you know what I what I know is that person will end up sharing with other people like, man, I love mm. Mind Pump. Mind yep. Pump introduced me to Jordan Shallow. And it benefits if, everybody. Right. Even if you're going off and spending your money with Jordan Shallow and not with Mind Pump, it's still I still see it as a win in the, the overall the overall game. And it is. Yeah. Nothing's more disappointing to me than and it's happened twice now, twice since we've started uh this 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 business, where nothing's more disappointing than seeing someone with lots of potential and talent. Like a tremendous amount of potential, and you and we identify it. You know, I'll see this person be like, "Oh, this person has got good information, a lot of talent. They could really grow. Uh, all they would need is a little bit of our help." Yeah, but what's in it for me? And then I go talk to them. Yeah. And then their response is, "Well, okay. Well, how much are you going to pay me? Or I don't know. You know, I'm, I don't know if I can make the time for that because this and that. Maybe you guys can reimburse me for this. Yeah, or, right. I got to drive 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, or whatever. Right. It's like, get the. Are you fucking serious? We are introducing you to a massive audience. We're we're producing all this media. Yeah. Our job and goal, literally, we're not making any money off you. We just want the content. We just want to make the relationship and introduce you to people. And you do whatever you want with it. And you're asking me how much I'm going to pay you and all yeah. this other stuff. Go fly a fucking car. Yeah, that's, well, listen, you have your priorities and that's fine. You're just never going to work with me again. And at some point, and I know there's there's two people it's happened with and one of them happened a long time ago. And for sure, I know this. the first individual 
looks at everything now and goes, I fucked up. Oh, for I sure. I totally fucked up because yeah. they, they lost an opportunity because they were so short-sighted Right. And they had that stupid mentality, which is just a lot of people idiotic. Don't, they don't realize we're just trying to lift them up. You know, as much as we want to grow, we want them to grow with us. Right. It's not like a competitive thing. Like just, you know, trust us. Well, like, I, I remember, I remember this when uh, you know being a trainer and then being a manager of trainers, and it reminds me of the same feeling of you know, me allowing my trainers to, you know, train my clients too. And people just did not understand that. They just thought that was so crazy. And I'm sure in my entire career, I'm sure that I lost a client that way. I'm for sure I am. But I didn't look at it as like a fuck the trainer who took my client because I allowed them a trainer. I looked at it like, oh shit. Oh. I let somebody who They're I'm the, doing something. I'm uh, the boss, yeah. right? I'm supposed to be better than you are. You train my client and now they want to train with you. Like, whoa, what a great growth opportunity for me. Like that I like so Someone that is working for me could actually win over a client of mine that I established the first relationship with. Mm -hmm. yeah. I look at our business the same way. If Jordan Shallow came in and spoke to our audience or anybody for that matter, I'm just using his example because he was here this morning. You know, if someone comes in and they take, and our whole audience leaves to them, yeah. well, wow, there's a lot of there's things. There's a lot of self reflection. We right. Need to, there's a, there's <laughs> a lot of shit to, that we need to oh, work I mean, on. I mean, is it, if you're a true, because a lot of people say, like, I'm a competitor, I like to compete. And no, that's not. Sometimes that's not true. They think that's what they, that that's what they are, but they're really not. Because a true competitor is this: a true competitor is somebody that wants to compete against someone when they are at their absolute best. And I yes. don't mean myself. Like, yes, when I compete, I want to be at my best, but I want my opponent to be at their absolute best. And then if I beat them, then I won. I don't want to yeah. enter. I don't want to enter into a race. Let's say I'm. Let's say I'm a, a you know a sprinter, and now I'm entering into this competition, and I know my 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 competition is you know Adam, right? Let's say Adam is another good sprinter, and everybody's saying, oh, you know, it's going to be you know touchy. Let's see, we could be first place you or or first place him. We don't know. And then we enter the competition, and Adam sprains his ankle, and I win. Am I fucking? Is that a win? No, yeah. I didn't get a chance to compete against him. Yeah. I competed against a dude who hurt his ankle. I want to compete against people when they're at their absolute best, so I can test my best against their best, yep. and then that is a win. And if I lose at that, I'm okay with that. If I win because the other competition is fucked or because I gave them the wrong information, I tricked them or whatever, it doesn't fucking count. All right, it doesn't count at all. And so I, I, that's the kind of attitude I think will take you far in life because here's the deal, 100% you will not win everything, guaranteed. I don't, nobody ever wins everything. It just doesn't work that way. Well, talking about winning, I'm going to make a transition yep. over into sports because I just read this this morning and I thought this was crazy, dude. So uh, you know who Ronaldo is, the soccer player? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know he just got traded to another team? I don't know if you guys know. No. Okay, so he just recently Why got... You, I can't believe you're watching soccer news. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> This is this is a, I'm trying to redeem. Here we go. Again. I'm trying to redeem myself for yeah, all no. the people hating me about soccer right now. So I got some it's soccer. It's pronounced in. football. Yeah. <laughs> okay, asshole. Boy, did I ruffle some feathers with oh that one. Oh my god. Man. It, it's still, and you doubled down it, 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 on it. It's so fun. It's still. I know. It, it, it's, it's, soccer, it's kind of fun to, to soccer razz them up a fans little bit. and players are, are for sure the most sensitive. You could talk shit about a football fan or player like they're just yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah slough Bro, it off. You throw get, some pads dude, on. Let's see how tough you are. It's like an age old thing. I mean, we had we. We had to share the field a little bit with seeing soccer players, and we, we would always measure it based off of who was was in, uh, you know, the sports medicine, uh, like getting treatment, like before and after. Like it was all soccer players. It was like two <laughs> football guys in there. And we're like, what? What are you guys doing? That you're getting hurt so often? Oh my god! You're still <laughs> you know? shit. Like, oh my god, bro! Yeah, it's like, a, like got, a bunch of snakes out you there. Got, what? It, the the fa soccer fans are so. They are. They, you, if you go to a game, it's amazing, bro. Dude. It's yeah. the only, only sport I, I know of yeah, where they have hooligans. It's the only sport where every game they stand up the entire oh, fucking game. It's the only and sing the whole the time. I wish we had that kind of fan base for football. Is what I'm saying. Well, yeah. no, I don't think you do. It's the only sport that I know where if a player fucks up bad enough, he, his life is at risk. There was a Colombian player, I believe, who oh, scored a yeah. goal. In his own fucking goal, on accident, got killed. Killed on, uh, when he got off the plane. Or yeah, something. yeah. What like, was this? I this was that years a while ago. ago yeah. Years ago. Oh well, yeah. you're talking about well, in fucking back in the days, dude. People get the, waffled. Well, all the I, and I don't. I think it still is. You know what that is? No. Okay, so when when everybody gets like pushed into like a fence 
And oh, and they get smashed. Yeah, like soccer people players died are, from that. Bro, soccer players are crazy. They're crazy, crazy, crazy. That's why I look at you and I almost look at you like, bro, <laughs> know, it's like uh, stop well, talking. They're all, they're, like, we're like, just teasing. Well, it's yeah. like six of the biggest fucking mafias like own soccer teams, bro. Uh, yeah, just like yeah. for, over the last like I, I don't know if it still exists that way. I know it was just like 20, 30 years like that. So I don't, that probably is why someone got killed. It had nothing to do with. Like, yeah, it's probably what it yeah, is. Yeah, it was. Like a, a, it was a bet. That yeah, a hundred percent. You just fucked, fucked some up. mobster over a fight. Ha- happened in 1994. Yeah. 1994, a Colombian oh. player made a goal yeah, in his own, bro, bro. and he got fucking killed. Yeah, dude. in Colombia, bro, that's still that, that's all run by all the yeah. cartel, dude, oh, for sure. Colombia? Drugs? What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. But anyways, uh, so Ronaldo is uh, goes to another team. The, yesterday, t-shirt sales for jersey sales. The team made $62 million. Oh, no. Wow. 540,000 jerseys sold in a wow. day. Holy shit. Well, he's one of the most popular ones he's, there is. Well, he's there, the most yeah. popular athlete in the world. Yeah. By far. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's the most popular You know athlete what in the world. it is? It, well, first of all. But I mean, th- 62 million, yeah. your business just by acquiring this guy. That's insane. That's yeah. insane. Here's why I think it's such a passionate, like insanely passionate sport. First off, they have a, a World Cup where countries play against other countries and right. people have a lot of national pride. Pride, right? Yeah, that's so exactly you can see. What it is. So it's like the Olympics, but way, way, way. You know, way Simplified. more passion. Yeah. Way more and it's all directed than... into one thing yep. instead of like all kinds of different mm-hmm. sports. And then because you know, over three billion people in the fans in the of soccer fans in the world, and billions of people play it, you have a lot like the poorest communities just, in the world. Just so, you, just so you know, this is what the statement you're making, the argument you're making right now. This is part of my belief of why uh, basketball and football could catch up to it is because they're right now we dominate here. Well, if we if if soccer was dominated by one country and just fucked everybody up all the time for forever, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be as popular. But it's because there's actually all these other countries actually have a legitimate chance because they have great players too. When you start seeing like a, a NBA association in in Europe and that mm-hmm. is competitive, and we yeah. can play world, I mean, we can do like a world I, league I, or like I Olympics see, become more competitive. Yeah, once they catch up, it, yeah. it'll I could be see super competitive. I could see football growing. Right now, they all fly here. They all come over here right. from other states. To to play here because they're paid this is better. Where the money is, yeah, yeah. This, and the league is better, and so we're 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 plucking all the players that are ever other. Yeah, else. yeah, I get that, but here's I keep saying this. You got this is a With real the internet. It's going to change. No, everything. this is Kids. a legitimate. This is a legitimate uh, fact. Is that football is expensive and expensive sports have it's not they don't have a lot of access. That's a weird fact you use. It's a very true one. Look, it's if, not whether it's true or not. It's just a weird one that you use. Listen, you go to go to some. You go to basketball. It's fucking cheaper. It, basketball has well, way better chance, and ba- yeah. basketball has. Okay, so then fans. let's use that one. Stop using that fucking football, argument. It's a football. terrible argument. Okay, football. who cares? So let's, yeah. let's just take football out of it. Basketball will catch up to soccer. I could. I don't think it'll catch up, but I don't think it'll catch up. I think. I think, I think it has a long way to go to catch up. Oh my god, you're looking at three billion fans versus. Five hundred uh, million. Today, well, you're talking about you know Facebook and fucking Instagram and and social media not being around until, until the last 10, 15 years. Here's, wait, wait till twenty more years. This shit's been around in here, our lifetime. Watch. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Bad, here's the, and this makes this actually uh, is an important fact to take in consideration. You go to the poorest villages in Africa. You go to poor areas of South America. Kids can play soccer with a rudimentary ball, and they don't need anything else. They play in the dirt. They play in the streets. Most kids growing up in a lot of these countries play soccer yeah. in the streets. Bro, you can bro, play. Ta- I mean, bums yeah. have iPhones, dude. Before you, you know it, tackle every- in America, yeah, without it, pads. Well, it's good. It's gonna happen. Bro, everywhere. American poor people are getting a, gonna have a fucking hoop. Poor bro. people in America have a higher standard of living than some of these some of these people in these other countries. That's a mm, fact. So yeah. you're right, but not over there. So. It's it's totally different. So you've got all these, and, and here's the other reason so you why you get a so, milk crate. I mean, you got a hoop right there. Dude. Yeah, oh, sure. I you, know you got to have a milk crate, I, and I'm not I'm not right. saying this to be funny. Well, like, yeah, I know, but you got to have a net, you know, or something. Nothing. Or nothing. Oh, I guess yeah, you put little rocks up. Some of these kids, some goal. of these kids will yeah, will, cones, will go to you, yeah. they'll go to dumpsters and find I mean, rubber bands you, and you, make. I mean, these you, little, could, you could argue that that soccer is it's a factor, the the cheapest, and that I don't, but I don't think that's enough to. Keep it as the most dominant. It's sport why it forever. spread. It's oh. the it's the reason why soccer spread so fast. May, okay, sure. okay, that's why okay. it exploded. Okay, I, I'll take that. Yeah. You know, pre uh, pre internet. You know, mm-hmm. I could see that would be like, hey, real easy to learn, not very expensive. Anybody could pretty much pick it up, and, and start you could get good at yeah. it right. even in those circumstances where you have players who played barefoot their entire life, and then somehow gets discovered, mm-hmm. and then they're playing in these fucking crazy leagues you see this all the time you see these african teams that have no you should see some of the gyms they train in 
and they're competing in the World Cup, and some of them are doing pretty decent and getting kind of far. So, I mean, those are all, those are all big factors. And that's also why they're so passionate because – if you're that poor and you're playing this one sport that you you can play and you can watch it on maybe TV or hear about it and your country's competing in it, man, that just I don't know how that's going to be overtaken. I just mm. I just don't see it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, you gotta yeah. say maybe. <laughs> I don't. Wanna, I'm scared to travel to Europe with you or anywhere else. I know, right? I know. I know. I know. Just pissed. remember, I one of us. That's why one of us is a supporter. Teasing. I mean, it's it's a fun debate. I think I, I I get some of your points when you make when you make the. the Have you ever uh, seen like a high 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 level soccer player kick? A ball and bend that shit into the yeah, into the yeah, goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is some creepy. Dude, I used to play for a long shit. time. Yeah, I played for seven years. Yeah, dude. I knew. Hey, I'm a fan. Did you guys know? It. Did you guys know this? This is white? no, it's not. No, no, that's a, that's you, a, that's that was a, a myth. Yeah, did, did you, you saw s- it in Joe Rogan's? Did post? you see? Yeah, the did okay you, sign yeah, is a white yeah. power symbol. Did you see all the controversy it stirred up though? Did you Did you see Joe Rogan's post? Yeah. Oh, so stupid. Crazy, it, yeah. Because I mean, even this, when you hold it down, is like that, England, that's a game where it's like, yeah. If you look at it, oh, now I get to slug you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that was all that was. No, so it, what it, it means something else. Here's now. how it started. It was on the 4chan website, and there were and so 4chan and Reddit have many times started these controversies on purpose to see what they can do. And so uh, one of these was these guys said, "Hey, let's make everybody think that the OK symbol is white power." Uh, so they put out this false story. And then shit just spreads on. And if it's anything to do with racism or whatever or conspiracy like that, it's going to spread. And so mm-hmm. you have a bunch of people saying, don't make that symbol. You're being fucking racist. Dude, the OK symbol's been around for, I don't know, how many hundreds of years. Right. Yeah. You know, that's absolutely Well, bullshit. I think that's the point that Joe was trying to make is that's how hilarious it is that it's something Stupid. that was made up. But we, we live in this such a charged era now where someone says just something like looking this. for something right real yeah, quick like oh my god i can't believe you did that no look he's doing the okay symbol in that picture from 1975 i knew he was a kill white him yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like you, you put you see put bill cosby like, up there. calm down yeah, yeah. <laughs> not necessarily the best example of I died. a good person i died <laughs> did you uh so there's another one Joe that had me rolling last <laughs> night there was another one that oh, a group shit. on reddit did so there was a group of of people on reddit who were just anti-LGBT, right? They're against like the gay community and talking all kinds of shit. They came up with this conspiracy to say that the uh, that pedophiles are trying to normalize their sexual orientation and that the LGBT community is going to put them in their group. And then they made all these fake memes that said LGBT uh, P to stand for you know pedophile, or whatever, to bring them in. And then what it did is it angered all the people. All the conservatives who then believed in this conspiracy oh, and are saying, "Oh my God, they're letting the pedophiles in." We knew it. All made up. It was wow. all made up on Reddit, Man. and they did exactly what they were trying to do. So it's 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 an interesting way of warfare Dude, now the that we're mob seeing. could be manipulated so easily. Now. Dude, Everybody's just so like on just like this knee jerk reaction response to everything. It's, like we all need to calm down, take some deep breaths. You know, ask, assess like what the intent is. You know, like is this where's the source coming I from? Had, All yep. these things. I had a family member actually post stuff and saying, "Oh my God, the the LGBT community is letting them in and saying it's another sexual orientation." And people were commenting all pissed off. And I looked at it and I commented, "I'm like, let's be clear here. Nobody wants pedophiles in their fucking group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. instant. Like uh, you're instantly uh, destroyed. You know, publicly. And nobody wants that. And I did a little bit of research. I'm like, here you go." It was a group on Reddit trying to did this on purpose and knew this would happen, Man. and now you guys fucking bought into it. It's bullshit. Wow. Same thing with the OK symbol. Dang, it's dude. it's an interesting era of t- of cyber warfare, though. That's what that is. <sighs> yeah, where you can spread uh, you know a myth or whatever or, or or something that's false, and then it starts to get legs on its own, and then before you know it, people believe that. You know, I don't know. Obama, you know, was uh, he was he was uh, born in somewhere else, and he's a Muslim, or you know, these types of things just build get legs. People start to believe it, but it's all bullshit. It's right. a whole new era. Well, there's a good old saying that I remember. Some wise man used to tell me, "Believe half of what you see and nothing that you hear." Mm. I swear, it's so true. It's it really, is. You know what I'm saying? It's absolutely. <laughs> it's true. half the things you see you perceive differently, and there's it, more going on yep. than, which, than, than meets the eye. And then half, most of what you hear is you fucking can barely bullshit. even trust your own memories. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the way I look at it is just leave people to themselves, let them take care of themselves, and that's it. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, don't hurt anybody, don't steal, I know. and then you're done. Anyway, 
This will be a good contest, gentlemen. Well, we're, I'm we're excited. We're heading over now to go get the dunk. We're going to head over to uh, the Nutra shop mm-hmm. at uh, Burnell. I wanted to schedule the. Uh, we were going to have a truck come here, and they're going to hydrostatic way, but yeah. So what we're going to do is like it's just it was just going to postpone this too long. Everybody wants to get going. And yeah, rolling. we'll just do it this way. And, and so we're going to head down there. So we should all take pictures too, unless yep. you want to take your own. Uh, you know, so like shirt off, front, side, back, or what? Yeah, I think we could we can do that. I think that everybody should be responsible for that, and that would be something that we share at the very reveal everything at the end, the beginning and the after. We'll just have to have our audience trust the like today we do that. Yeah, yeah, today yeah. at some point today. Uh, take a photo. You to shave your back, Justin? I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get some pimples. Popped, and I, yeah. I highly recommend you try to look as fat as possible and as miserable as possible, just like they do in the before and after pictures. Like, <laughs> like I did that one time. Yeah, where you guys just like, like look with my as bad as you can. And the, then we'll the picture that your wife got pissed off at. She's so mad. <laughs> <laughs> She's so mad at me. Yeah, that'll be She's good. Like, you don't look like this. Oh, like, I, I, I did that. Because I'll, I'll share. I'll even share like my you know my you know manscaping and tanning strategies leading into the the oh, final wow. picture. And Are everything. you gonna do all that? See, that's where you have the that's, advantage. That's the secret sauce. Yeah, hey, nobody else is doing. Hey, that. whatever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you have, you can, you can do it too. It's not something you can't do. Man, I'm man. planning on being super orange at the end. Yeah, yeah. well, so do the know. spray tan on Justin. Yeah. Oh, I am going to do the BPC 157. I am going to try that. I don't know if that's going to benefit me. Well, you're using it for your gut, right? That's the reason. I want to see if it helps my gut. Yeah, I want to see because it's supposed to. Now, you know what I read? I read online that people will eat it, will actually squirt it in their mouth for gut health. Doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like your gut would destroy it. Right, yeah. hmm. but that's what I read. Yeah, I'm still gonna do. The, I'm still gonna do the injection thing. So I'm gonna need your help. Okay. To doing that, but oh, you know what? I do want to mention. Uh, we did write a new guide, a new free guide. The top three most important things you could do to burn body fat. It's a perfect time to release it, right along with our competition. Yep. If you go to uh-huh. mindpumpfree.com, so that's mindpumpfree.com. You can get the guide. If you scroll to the very bottom, it's the last one. Uh, top three things for fat loss. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.